Welcome to Catalyze, the Connected Leaders Academy virtual conference designed to reshape your vision of transformation. As we navigate the evolving business landscape, our speakers will unveil innovative strategies to manage and initiate change. Prepare to adapt, innovate, and lead, ensuring your role as a catalyst in this transformative era. Hi, we are going to ride the wave, so hang on and let's go. Now, you may have thought of a tsunami when you saw the word tidal wave in the title of my talk. So we need to have a little oceanography lesson to clarify and keep us all on the same definitions. Now, NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, tells us that a tidal wave is a shallow water wave caused by gravitational interactions between a combination of the sun, the moon, and the earth. Probably not what you had in mind when you read the title. So there's also something called the tidal bore, and National Geographic describes it as only occurring along the coast where the river empties into the ocean and the surge of the uncoming incoming tide actually reverses the flow of the water temporarily. Now, sometimes in business, this is what we do to get people's attention, but it is temporary, not something we want to keep doing. So don't expect your tidal bore wave to sustain flowing opposite of the energy. Now, Noah describes that a tsunami is a series of waves caused by earthquakes or undersea volcanic eruptions. The waves build higher as the depths of the ocean decreases. The speed is determined by the depth of the wave so they can be as fast as jets and in places only slowing down when they reach shallow waters. Now, this is good in business because you wanna be a massive force, but you don't wanna wipe out your customers so slow down for them. So how do you, as an entrepreneur, manage the difference between them? Your business, whatever it is that you do, physical sales, coaching, publishing, training, all came from an idea. It was something you saw as a need or that needed to be changed. It was hope. Now, as a 16 times international award-winning author, I have been through the storms to understand the full need and benefits of hope. The belief in hope is something tangible, not a thing you say when you don't know what to say. You can't have hope without the belief in it. That's like being angry and joyful at the same time. It just doesn't happen. So I have a lot of writer downers for you, but here's the first one. The tangibility of hope gives us courage when it to win when it seems that we are defeated. And I'll repeat that again. The tangibility of hope gives us courage when it seems we are defeated. Now, my acronym for hope is helping others in their purpose every day. Now, that's probably not your acronym for hope. Personally, I looked up encouraging words that begin with H-O-P-N-E. and -E. And you can do that for yourself to find your own acronym. But hope is the energy that propels us through fears, risks, doubts, frustrations. It gives you the ability to create tidal waves, even when you thought you couldn't. Now, what does all of this hope have to do with creating a tidal wave or tsunami for your business? Everything. And here's why. Losing hope is like an ocean that's glassy. No waves, gentle, no winds. Sailors actually refer to this as the doldrums. They can't go anywhere. Chris Wall Freeman in his book, Prayers to Start Your Day, states that hope is a perishable commodity. Otherwise, you couldn't lose it. Well, I agree that it can be perishable. But what I truly believe is that hope is always around you, like air is always around you. You may lose sight of hope, like when the clouds roll in or you're in the middle of a storm and it hits hard and you run aground, but you can get hope from someone else. You can always talk to someone about what's going on. Another way is that you can also read something that lights hope up like a light in a lighthouse guides the sailors in a storm to safety. That's why maps, instruction manuals, guidebooks are important. Now, hope became alive like a wave when you took action on that idea, even if the action was to think, I know I can do this. You had not achieved it yet, but you already saw your success in it. Now, in my book, Everyone Has a First Day, Five Success Principles for Writers and Entrepreneurs, what is in here is what each of you have gone through or you are going to go through it. It's an instruction manual, a guidebook. Those five success principles are your sun, your moon, your earth, the earthquake and volcanoes, and the rivers to help you build on to hope. So it doesn't have to be a perishable commodity to you. You have most already been asked 
most likely you've already been asked who are your top five, the top five people you have around you the most of the time. You know, you spend the most time with them. Are they encouraging, uplifting, keeping hope alive and well? So you can see your success right in front of you. I like to identify those as your earth. You can change them like the seasons can cause change, but you always have a top five that are there. Now, in my book, I also explain about distractions, failures, and victories, and how to prepare for each of them and why they are necessary. They are like the sun and the moon. They can be full in your face or as dark as the new moon, but they will be there. You just need to know how to be prepared for them. Now, you put all three together and you get your tidal wave. Could even be a tidal board, but watch where your energy is going. Now, some of you might think, well, this is all fine and dandy when you're starting out, but what I really want to know is how do I create that tsunami, those earthquake and volcanic explosive waves that take over the world? Well, ready or not, that volcanic explosion or earthquake has already hit. It was that idea, that hope. It started the wave. Now, remember we talked earlier about the calm sea, no wind, when a tsunami like an idea first happens, hardly noticed. In fact, you probably didn't even notice yours because you hadn't told anyone about it yet. But you did take one step forward, and now the water's getting a little shallower and the wave is getting a little bigger. Another principle from my book, keep your eyes on the vision in front of you. Now, that tsunami wave in the middle of the ocean is just a shiver, and it's heading in three different directions, forward, backward, and upward. And sometimes, like your business, you may be going in three different directions. So you have to decide which horizontal direction you're going to go to. So you can take the vertical direction to get bigger and grow. And in most cases, the tsunami eventually dwindles down in one direction, but builds momentum in the other direction. This is why we get a pause, not a stop. A pause to see, really see which direction your business is growing and where you are expending your energy. That is so important. You decide which path you're taking, who you're going to listen to. You're going to find your coaches, your mentors, get more training so you can make better decisions and you're gaining momentum as you go forward and vertical. Now you're starting to look like a wave, but you still might look like all the other waves. So how do you distinguish that you are a tsunami and not just a tidal wave or a wave created by the wind? This part's easy. See, when the wind dies down, the wave is gone. Also picture this. Surfers surf a tidal wave and a tsunami overtakes everything. Now, when things are windy, like holidays, seasonal changes, birthdays, anniversaries, you ride out that wave with sales and bonuses and gifts. It's here and then it's gone. Good tools, but temporary until the next wind. Tidal waves are what surfers use and they are energy every day. Not always all day, but let's say the tidal wave is the bulk of your company. Catching the energy on that first wave is nearly euphoric. It carries you all the way to the teeny tiny wave on the sand at the beach. That energy is what you are after and you can get it from others as I mentioned before. But there are so many waves here and there and on that beach and this beach. What do you do? Well, surfers need to know where the waves are. So you write a book about it and other surfers buy that book as well as other businesses because they want to know where the surfers are too. Because those surfers are going to need swimwear, they're going to need footwear, sunglasses, surfboards, hair products, a vehicle to get to and from the beach, gas stations, skincare products. They need to be in shape. So exercise equipment, healthy food, sponsors, competitions, and they need access to certain beaches, network with each other surfers or with each of the other surfers. So you decide which wave, which need are you going to serve, your customer, the surfer, or the supplies that the surfer will need and use. Okay, so now you're getting to be known out of all the other waves. You are the wave that is going to make the biggest impact. You no longer look like the other waves. You're recognized as a tsunami. But wait, what's this? It's a rogue wave trying to mimic you and steal your momentum. Don't worry about it. The rogue wave is only one of those distractions that happen. But you're prepared because it is temporary and you are not. Now let's look at some things that can stop a tsunami underwater mountains and sand. Now, if you took all the water out of the oceans, you would be amazed at the mountains that are there, bigger than K2 and Everest. And remember, 
you're a giant tsunami. Your wave extends from the bottom of the ocean floor to the surface of the water. And those underwater mountains can put a real stop to your momentum. Maybe you took your eyes off of your vision of success for a moment, or things got really tough. You lost your hope because when you look forward, all of a sudden there's that mountain in front of you and you can think, oh, well, it was a nice ride while it lasted. Or you can say, ah, if I change my direction with a curtain, my perspective, I can go around the mountain and gain even more momentum. Now that is tangible hope. Perspective is a great way to do this. And I do talk about that in my book too. <laughs> but look at something from a different angle and you see new opportunities and hope is renewed. So let me give you some examples of companies that are tsunamis. Ford. Ford not only produced cars like all the other car producing ways, but Ford shook like an earthquake and started a tsunami that is still in effect today, the assembly line. Something that affected not only the automobile industry, but a multitude of other industries as well, even today. Now, sometime in the 70s, a young man was working on his own company and then started out with a person at home. He saw a vision for businesses and convinced banks that they needed his products, an educational institution and other businesses, and finally the home consumer. That's why every home has a PC now, and most likely more than one. He created a tsunami that took us from Windows 95 to Windows 11 Pro. Every year he adds momentum to his weight because every year you are going to upgrade your PC. That is building momentum. What about Boeing? They didn't invent the first airplane, but they are making the airplanes you fly in today. Despite the mountains on the ocean floor, they hit along the way through seasonal changes, their distractions and failures, and yet they keep looking forward into their hope of success. Cell phones. We went from car satellite phones to these bricks we carried to now having our whole lives dictated by the cell phone we hold in our hands. I ran across a photo the other day when I was unpacking. It was a photo I took with my film camera of a young man taking a picture of his buddies with a cell phone. It was such a new and crazy idea that at the time we wondered if it was just another fast fad, a tile bore. At the time, cell phones were only used to call, receive calls, and just started to be used for text messages. Talk about a tsunami. It seems Everyone in the world, even third world countries and far out of the way places have cell phones. It's almost unfathomable how the tsunami cell phone has impacted the whole world. And the tidal waves created off of that are all the accessories for the cell phone. The poppet tabs, the chargers, the cords from three feet to 10 feet, the chargers in our vehicles, the cases, the bedazzling, all the different cell phone providers and manufacturers. It can be mind boggling. Look at the computer chip another tsunami and they are in practically everything tablets notepads refrigerators tvs are automobiles radios which by the way have you tried to find a portable radio lately almost impossible because we went from boom boxes to myspace to youtube for music and here's another tsunami facebook myspace and others were there like all the other ways in the ocean but facebook was a tsunami which grew and overtook the world now, I'm sure you can think, can think of others like Russell Brunson, who created ClickFunnels, started as an idea, and now he has a tsunami of ClickFunnels that change how we interact with our customers, our clients, our people, our avatars, and others are riding his wave, but that does not diminish his wave at all. It actually adds power to it. Remember that when you're creating your business, you don't have to be a massive tsunami like Microsoft, Boeing, cell phones, or computer chips, unless you want to be and more power to you. Even if you want to be a tidal wave, more power to you. Maybe your company is the tidal bore or the sand on the beach where the waves are continually rolling in to provide enjoyment for surfers and ocean goers and fishermen alike. Now, if you've ever been to the beach, you undoubtedly came home with sand in your shoes, your bags, your britches, and other places. Sand keeps the ocean from taking over the land and it slows a tsunami down. So now that you've created your wave, your idea, your vision with hope to reach success, you need it to grow, really grow and keep that momentum. You need to navigate the obstacles that would try to deter you, stop you, slow you down before you want it to. Now, what is it that Jose says? A wave lifts all boats. Okay, I paraphrased it. You can read the whole quote where it comes from in the first issue of our magazine, Wisdom on the Front Porch. But what about now, today? Well, in John Maxwell's book, Maxwell Daily Reader, June 16th and 17th, pages 184 and 185, he talks about contentment, which is a really great benefit of hope. And this does work to gain energy for your tsunami. 
and I'm going to paraphrase because we're limited on time, expecting the best in everything, remaining upbeat, even when you get beat up. Now, trust me, surfers understand about being flushed by the ocean. That's a beating that's tough to take. Seeing solutions in every problem, not the problem. Holding on to hope even when others are telling you it's hopeless. And then he says, take 30 days to make the best, expect the best, give your best. Now I call it Meg. And if you've ever watched Shark Week or Shark movies, you know about the Meg. Make the best, expect the best, give your best. I have Meg written on my physical calendar for every day for 30 days. Next, if you don't already have your daily routine, listen to this. Charles Haddon Spurgeon, who was almost born almost 200 years ago, wrote every morning and every evening. We call it journaling today. But now we have his morning and evening books from well over 100 years ago. Jose Escobar, leader of the Connected Leaders Academy, has his bookends. The morning and evening routines are like bookends that hold your books together, but they hold your day together with a morning and evening routine. They are in his journaling book, Aha, 90 Day Battle Plan, The Journey to Self Mastery, and it has a daily calendar. Ellis Patrick Me has a 35 day journaling calendar, 35 days of guided self care and discovery, and you can use it all year long. It's a tsunami morning and evening routine to help you be a force to be reckoned with. Now, why are these uh, evening? Morning and evening routines necessary. I'm going so fast, I need to hit that sand and slow down. Well, as Tony Robbins said, referring to taking a dip in the river every morning near his home, does he enjoy it? No, but he does it for one thing and one thing only. He does it for the discipline. You need to do the AM and PM tsunami routine for you for the discipline. Now, every morning I have my routine that actually includes, it's not the whole routine, but it includes five books. The Maxwell Daily Reader, The Stoic Calendar, not a real book, but I read it. A book by Corey Ten Boom. I read one chapter a day. And when I'm done with it, I might read another book. And then after that one, I'll go back to another of Corey's books. I also do a study book right now. It's The Armor of God by Priscilla Shire. I don't read one chapter a day in this. It's a study book. I take parts of it in order and digest it, sometimes for the whole week. Then I actually do my 35 day journal. And yes, I use my own journal. That's why I wrote it. I gain discipline in this routine so I can feed my energy for my own tsunami. So here are some earthquake shivers if you want them. And this one actually came from Jose, form, F-O-R-M. When you meet other people, you find out their family, their occupation, recreation, and what's meaningful to them. Common placing, use these, it's energy that you get from other people that help you keep your momentum up for your wave. It builds your wave, giving you credibility. Talk to people in person. Get to know the people around you so you can hear what is their struggle, their wins, their pains, their dreams, and see if and how you can feel the need. And think about it as connecting with them because it's something you have similar together. You know, and if you can't feel something that they need, just be a friend or you probably know someone you can recommend to them. OK, and that's and you can also go to local events um, for things like that, too. So you need to have your wave that is going to do something even better. And there's a principle in my book. You add value to others because you're adding value to yourself by doing that. So it's an adding value wave, a wave that everyone seems to want. Your wave needs to do that. So you celebrate others. You ask yourself, how can I serve you? How can I support you? How can I add momentum to your tsunami? My last writer downer, care about the opportunity that you are for others. So now, are you being blown by the wind in the season, catching a tidal wave, or are you a force to be reckoned with, a tsunami? Surf's up, dudes and dudettes. <laughs> now, if any of this has given you hope, giving you the momentum, fed your energy, huzzah! Oh, right, we're on the ocean. Shiver me timbers. <laughs> now you can give, give, give so you can receive. By the way, that's in my book too. Your energetic tsunami is making an impact. You're being authentically you, so your energy is used wisely. You have great value in you. That value that you have in you is what makes you worthy. And that worth and that value are what make you enough. And all that together 
is why you matter. And that is why people want your authentic you. Always be authentically you so you can use your energy wisely. Now, there are some suggestions I can offer. You know, for me, how can I help you? What can I do to increase your tsunami for you? I have podcasts, or write books, anthologies. You can write your own book, editing, formatting, publishing, my magazine, Wisdom on the Front Porch, my membership, by uh, networking events. I know people, <laughs> the internet programs that can be tough to learn. So let's go be a tsunami. There's plenty more where this came from right here. I can pray for you. I can be a shoulder for you. And I'm old. I got a lot of wisdom in these years. I know things. <laughs> I have to tell you, I enjoy this process of preparing and creating this talk for you. I actually practice what I preach. And that's to think of one person that I'm writing for. Who is it that really needs this message? And that's what you do for your business. That's what you do when you go to talk to somebody. What is it that you do? What is it that you can focus your energy, your resources, your business on for your clients, your customers, your people? And who do you want to serve? And it's going to draw them to you because we're meeting the needs that they have, that they want, that hope that they so desire. Surf's up. Let's go surfing. Thank you for participating in today's enlightening session of Catalyze. As we transition to our next expert, remember that each strategy and insight is a step toward becoming a transformative leader in your field. Visit ConnectedLeadersAcademy.com to stay engaged and informed. The journey of change is ongoing. Let's move forward together.